Greetings Duplicant and welcome to the Breach. Today we're going to start off by taming a Cobalt Volcano and during the building process of this I found out that I'd run out of steel which hastened my need to build an industrial brick. Here you can see that I've enclosed a volcano for later use and also you can see that uh, some time has passed and I now have a plentiful supply of crude oil. A Cobalt Volcano is slightly more tricky to cool than a copper volcano. By tricky you just slap on two steam turbines instead of one. The steam turbines will cool the cobalt down to 125 degrees celsius and as the duplicates will be in atmospheric suits I see no need to cool it down any further at the moment. You could slap on an active cooling solution but I'm feeling that at the moment it's a waste of time. During this build I'm going to go for a build, fill and then excavate to create a vacuum. I'll be also be using a double liquid lock setup just to stop the duplicants dropping hot cobalt in one of the liquid locks, it evaporating and me having problems with hot steam going everywhere. As you can see I'm just finishing off enclosing the steam room then I'll switch on the pump to pump out what little gas there is in there and then I'll add the second liquid lock. I'll be using crude oil for the liquid locks which means the duplicates can drop items in the temperature range of up to 400 degrees before everything goes horribly wrong. I could use petroleum but I don't know exactly how much I've got at the moment when I, when I was building this so I went with the safe option of crude because I know I've got a whole lake of that lying around. As you can see I'm demolishing the tiles now to create the vacuum and I'm just waiting on the crude oil to create the locks. I couldn't work out why it was taking so long to get the crude oil and what had happened is I'd built the pump out of sandstone and the temperature of the crude oil had destroyed the pump so I ended up having to replace the pump with granite and then the crude oil flowed. Once I've moved the last few bricks and the pumps etc you'll notice that the polluted water is off gassing which I realised and thought this is going to cause a problem. Luckily when I added the salt water to the build there was no polluted oxygen left so it all ended up okay. Avoided the problem more by luck than anything else. The next problem was all my own doing, trying to get the duplicants to uh, analyse an active volcano. Thankfully I have beds already prepared for such occurrences. As you can see we have a pool of liquid cobalt. We're going to add some salt water from a geyser that's just off screen which will act as our cooling medium which will turn to steam and leave some salt behind. Then we'll strap on two steam turbines to the roof and use the outputs of the steam turbines to cool the turbines down themselves and return the water to the steam room. As you can see here I am casually using steel for everything not realising that I've nearly run out. I will soon realise. And there we have it, a cobalt volcano tamer, the easy way. I'm not presently using the output power of these two steam turbines, but I have a plan which might manifest itself in the next episode. This is where I'm going to build my industrial brick. The brick is going to be an enclosed special area attached directly to the base with its own atmospheric docks. I have a double insulated layer of tiles between the two areas to stop heat transfer. I've also spammed down some marble blocks so at least when they're climbing the ladders or descending the pole at least the decor's nice around there. Though with all the industrial machineries it's never going to be in the green, it's definitely going to be red around here for quite some time. And here we have a chlorine vent, the least popular of all the vents. Well, it's my least popular vent anyway, but it's my video, so that's all that matters. Really, it's just a pain with its location. And I find it the least useful of the vents because you have access to plenty of bleach stone, so you can move chlorine gas around in a solid form to where you need it without having to pipe it from this gas vent itself. I've not had this many problems with uh, duplicates entombing themselves on this build for absolutely ages. Many, many, many patches. But I think one duplicate manages to entomb himself on each level that I build. I've started off by building what will be my heat deletion device. I'm going to fill it up with salt water as I have easy access to salt water locally. 
Once I have about 400 kilograms of salt water per tile, I will I top it up with some water. As only one resource can be on a tile at once, that'll mean that it'll automatically force two resources over two tiles, removing any gas from the area and allowing me to seal in with no problems. I'm going to use a thermal aqua tuner to rotate cool liquid around the area to make sure that the processes don't overheat. The machinery like the metal refinery or the plastic press exchanges heat with the tiles that it sat on so by cooling the tiles that it sat on it helps keep the machinery cool. By using this liquid bridge I can force the loop to continue uh, rotating the cool liquid even if the aqua tuner is not actually presently cooling any liquid at the moment. Anytime you use a thermal aqua tuner you want to build this little setup into the system. If you don't you'll find that you'll get hot spots in your cooling loop and that cooling loop if it's uh, at high temperatures will turn the liquid into steam or vapour and break your pipes. And this time it's Frankie causing trouble. Reset the clock. Zero cycles without a health and safety incident. This floor is going to be dedicated to metal refiners which I'll be building out of ceramic. I'll be using igneous insulated pipes to take the liquid up from the metal refiner into the steam room and back from the steam room to the metal refiner. I'll be using gold piping in the steam room to transfer as much heat as possible. The metal refiners draw a lot of power so they can be plugged directly into the power loop within the industrial brick. I want to speed up the process of adding salt water to the steam room so I'm going to build a roof and have more room for bottle emptiers up there. I'm not saying I've done this before, but make sure that the aqua tuner is powered before you seal the steam room up and start the metal refiners from working. Because hypothetically, if you did do this, you'd find that breaking into an area full of hot steam is a nuisance and creates problems for ages afterwards. Well, that's one less thing to worry about. Time to build a new floor. Well, this time it's Lindsay getting herself entombed. Reset the clock. Zero cycles without a health and safety issue. Here you can see me building the cooling loop. Uh, it's going to run past all the steam turbines and then it's going to cool each of the floors that I have machinery on. I'm going to build a liquid tank to act as a reservoir. This will equalise out all the temperatures in the pipe. I'll be adding a liquid temperature sensor after the reservoir and that will be how I decide whether I need to switch the aqua tuner on and off via automation. This can also act as a major point of failure if you do not add the automation wire. The aqua tuner will keep cooling the liquid below its freezing point. The water will freeze in the pipes and then break and that will be inside your steam room. So what will eventually become our steam room is nearly complete. The initial salt water we've added to the room is about 400 kilograms per tile at the moment. As you can see, as we add the fresh clean water, it takes up the full tile height of this room, expelling all the gases. Well, all the gases except for the little point next to the aqua tuna, which we'll sort out in a second.
Next, we're going to fill up our cooling loop with polluted water. We use polluted water because it allows you to go to a negative number, unlike water that would freeze in the pipes and break them. Well, yes, I do sound different. That is because I'm really ill at the moment and I don't know how much I want to be able to edit of this. So initially we bridge on the polluted water after we've filled the loop up as much as we can. Then we'll directly add some water to fill up the reservoir. This water is pre-chilled as it's coming from a polluted water vent. It's rotating around the loop even though the aqua tuner is switched off and is pre-cooling the different levels. Well that's the cooling loop filled. We have a couple of hundred kilos in the reserve tank. Next we need to fill up the oil refiners with a liquid to cool them down. We're going to be using petroleum. Petroleum isn't as efficient at cooling as water, but it can go to a higher temperature so we can run the refiners for longer without causing any damage. You can keep circulating this petroleum up to about 500 degrees Celsius, at which point it turns into sour gas and breaks the pipes. Thankfully this isn't me running out of petroleum, this is just me running out of petroleum that I have in a tank. I have a lot of petroleum sat in cans on the floor. And here's my setup using a bottle emptier and a pump to fill up the metal refiners with petroleum. To power the industry in here I'm going to just use some coal generators. This is just a temporary solution. I have plenty of coal, I think I've got 400 tonnes stacked up. This solution will be removed once I sort out, I'll go back and sort out my power generation. And just like that, we have our first steel produced in the industrial brick. And as we've set up the automation, we'll just fiddle around with the battery settings. Here you can see the water in the steam room turning to steam. The steam turbines won't kick in until the steam actually reaches 125 degrees Celsius. The amount of steam that is produced at the moment is transferring its heat back to the water, cooling down below 100 degrees Celsius and returning to its liquid state. Here you can see the salt water turning to steam because you can see salt dropping on the floor of the steam room. Even though I have urges to go and tidy it up, I can't. It's one of the few times that I have to leave debris lying around. I'm working through my lime very quickly at the moment, so I'm going to set up a crusher so I can process eggshells and fossils into lime because I'm going to need a lot of steel for space exploration. That's a lot of negative decor. Setting up both sets of poke shells, fossil and eggshells to lime, and of course processing salt to table salt for that one extra morale bonus. The industrial brick is taking shape. I've now enclosed it on three sides, so just the bottom to uh, close off. I need to add a plastic press, glass forge, etc. Well, that'll be done on a later episode. The most important thing was setting up the steel production. Thank you all for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the other side.